Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Taylor here with SaltyScales.com. One of the most popular questions that I get asked quite frequently is when is the best time to go fishing? Well, my response is always the same. The best time to go fishing is when you can. But that doesn't mean you can't improve or increase your odds when you go fishing by knowing a few different things and utilizing a very great tool that's available and it's free to all of us anglers right here on the World Wide Web. So what I want to discuss this evening is a little bit about weather, uh, this tool of course, um, tides, and also salooner, and why they matter when you're going out to target these species. Again guys, this isn't you know, 100% you have to go by these days uh, and these tides and these moons because I've went out on the absolute worst days possible according to the saloon or tides and weather and I've had some of my very best days. So don't let this hold you back but use it as a guide and know that if you utilize it properly you're going to catch more fish, you're going to become more efficient and fishing is going to be more catching. Let's jump in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so here we go. I'm on the website tidesforfishing.com. This is a platform that you want to be utilizing. If you're not utilizing something similar or a, you know, this particular site, you're really cutting yourself short because the information that this provides is absolutely crucial when planning your fishing trip. So let's get started. Just looking over here briefly at the corner, you'll see that we're going to cover weather, tide, salooner, and of course this website also offers different um, areas that will also help with your fishing need. First thing first is weather. It's extremely crucial um, that you're watching the elements, guys, and you're looking to see what is predicted for that day. Obviously, um, you don't want to get stuck out there in harsh elements and you definitely don't want to be the headline of a news story. So be cognizant of the weather, respect Mother Nature, and look at these things. So from right off the get-go, guys, you'll see that here it shows the wind, temperature, humidity, and visibility. This is all very good. Uh, wind is very important, obviously, due to the fact, for example, if you know, you're know you expecting a low tide and you're going fishing on a low tide, wind could, uh, like in the Tampa Bay, for example, if we have a specific wind, it could flush that water out and make it even more negative low than what we may have anticipated. Therefore, you know that you won't be able to target specific holes because it'll be dry land. Um, so be aware of that. Pay attention to your wind. It's very important. And also certain winds, um, I think, do produce a better bite you know, some say if it's come, wind's blowing from the west, fishing's the best. Uh, if it's blowing from the south, the bait falls in their mouth. If it's blowing from the east, fishing's the least. Blowing from the north, just don't go fishing at all. That's an old saying there. Um, not exactly true, but it definitely, the wind does impact the fishing. Now, pressure is very important, guys. You'll see here that you have a rising, stable, and falling pressure. Rising pressure is the, the best pressure to fish. And the reason being, oh, just so you know, I mean, the barometric pressure is defined as the weight or mass of the entire air column on a unit of the surface of air at sea level. Um, and why it's important is because fish sense pressure changes through its air bladders. And fish that have small air bladders, such as king, Spanish mackerel, wahoo, and dolphin, aren't as affected by barometric changes as those with large bladders, such as trout, redfish, tarpon, grouper, and snapper. And the reason being is because fish with small bladders have a body density that's closer to that of the surrounding water. They don't sense the pressure changes as dramatically, so their comfort levels aren't drastically altered. However, many things they eat have air bladders, and that alone could have a big impact on where you might find them and how they might behave. Fish with large bladders quickly sense when the air pre pressure is changing, or dropping, I should say, because there's less pressure on their bladder. And when there's less pressure, squeezing their bladders, their bladder expand a bit. When their bladders expand, fish become uncomfortable. They relieve their discomfort by moving lower in the water column or by absorbing extra gra gas in their bladders. And because of their anatomical and physiological stress that's exerted on them, they're not worried about eating at that particular time. They're more concerned when trying to find a depth where they can stabilize their bladder pressure and feel good. So I'm pretty sure you can relate to that. 
Um, when you're not feeling well, you really don't think about eating, do you? I know I don't. Um, and the same thing applies for fish, you know, or animals in general. So that's important, guys, to make sure, you know, and you can see these charts are very detailed. It's a little harder of a condition to predict this pressure, but I think with our technology this day and age, we're getting a little better. But you can see how this pressure here increased drastically at 8 a.m. and then had a sharp decline for a large portion of the day. And then a sharp incline again at 8 p.m. It started 8 to 12. So that rise in pressure definitely will help increase your odds of catching fish. Let's continue to scroll down. Here's the UV protection um, or the UV notification. And guys, this is super critical. And this is one of the reasons we started Salty Scales Fishing Apparel is to put out long-lasting American-made performance gear that keeps you protected from the elements. As you can see right here, our UV index is pretty much its highest. So you literally burn in, in minutes. So make sure that you're applying and wearing protective clothing. Uh, we're all very aware that melanoma is a serious condition. I think a lot more of us are taking it serious because we see how it's affected people around us. And it's a very nasty disease. So protect yourself out there. Let's keep on going down. All right, so here's a little chart that shows you the current air temperature uh, and water temperature in our, our immediate area. And you can see that it's at 76 degrees. Water temperature is crucial. One of my favorite times to fish is spring. And when that water temperature is between 70 and 74 degrees, I know the pelagics are invading the bay along with many other species. So the water temperature definitely plays a, a vital role in knowing when to target what species. Learning that and logging it will help you. All right, so let's continue to go down. You'll see here's another little chart showing the wave period. So when it, the waves might crest, the significance and the height of that wave, which is 2.6 feet. So they're fairly large. And, of course, we have a west-southwest wind um, or wave currently. And this is important, guys, because if the wind's blowing opposite of that, you know that you could potentially have even larger uh, winds or waves and you know, it could be detrimental to your trip, depending on if you're trying to cross a large body of water. All right. And then this keeps, um, you know, going on with the wave height. Also helps show you the sunrise and sun, exact sunset period. And we're going to keep going down here. This shows you the high tide and the low, low tide, when it might be rising and when it's falling. These are important, guys. Um, understanding the tide tables and the tidal coefficients will tell you the amplitude of the tide forecast, which is the difference in height between the consecutive high tides and the low tides in that given area. And this is important because it tells you the, the strength of the current in which the area you're going to be fishing. And a lot of times, guys, any time, like for example, high tide, an hour before high tide and an hour after high tide is typically always a peak fishing time for me. And you'll even see that right here. If you look at this chart, it shows a very high activity period around, what is it, 5 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock. And that's because it's right at the peak of that high tide. And fish have the tendency to feed right at that tide, you know, the top of the tide and that first of that outgoing tide. And you'll notice that pattern, same with with this here, it's not as strong of a tide, the coefficient, um, but it's still a productive time to fish. All right, just scrolling down. You'll see here it's still touching on the, the high coefficient, the low. You can see that here. Here's just the tide chart, guys, for the entire month. And what's nice about this, it'll tell you the coefficient. If it's a four tide day, an ebb tide, one tide day, gives you the moon phase. And also recommends good fishing times, which are days. And these are, all, uh, of course, based around the salooner periods, which is what we're going to talk about here in just a second. You'll see here the uh, rising and setting of the moon. And this is the lunar transit is the time at which the moon crosses the local meridian. 
So there's major and there are minor periods, and these major and minor periods are a time in which the fish feed are most active. So you want to pay attention to these times and even log it to track it yourself. But you can use these tables, and fishermen and hunters do it all the time, to tell when the moon is directly um, underfoot or overhead. The strongest activity occurs when there's a full moon or a new moon, and is weakest when there's a quarter moon or a three-quarter moon. This is because the combined gravitational force of the moon and the sun is strongest when both are directly above or directly below our heads. So this is very important, guys, to pay attention to. And like I said, fish, especially these major periods around, you know, a high tide can be absolutely phenomenal. And again, this just goes into more detail as to, you know, when the fish will feed the best. Uh, moonrise, moonset, sunrise, sunset. So guys, this is pretty much it. Uh, and this tells you the first quarter moon, last quarter moon, full moon, and new moon. All very important. But if you utilize this tool, guys, you're going to increase your catch ratio. You're going to have more fun on the water. And it's, you know, you don't have to get super scientific with it. You know, fish aren't as smart as we give them credit. They do feed at all hours of the day. But there are times, if you ever wondered, wow, why did I have such a great time on the water or a great fishing trip this particular trip? But then I went back this, the very next day and it was terrible. Well, guys, just so you know, the tides are the same every two weeks. So if you had a great trip, say, one Wednesday, and, you know, everything, you know, the tides were right, you had a great trip, in two weeks from that particular day, you're going to have the same type of tides. You might not have the same weather, the same winds, you'll have the same tides. So chances are, if you go back to that fishing area, you're probably going to have similar results. So make sure you're logging that and trying it. If you enjoyed this evening's tips, please give a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to learn a lot more together, and we're going to catch together. Until next time, I'll see you on the water.